All right, my friends, Happy New Year, and welcome back to War Thunder Ground Forces with the Angry Nerd. And today, we're going to take a look at the Swedish Vickers Mark E Type B. Now, the Vickers 6-ton tank, or Vickers Mark E, also known as the 6-tonner, was a British light tank designed as a private project at Vickers. It was not adopted by the British Army, but was picked up by many foreign armed forces. The first Mark E was built in 1928 by a design team that included the famed tank designers John Valentine Carden and Vivian Lloyd. The hull was made of riveted steel plates, one inch thick at the front and over most of the turrets, and about three quarters of an inch thick on the rest of the hull. The power was provided by an 80 to 95 horsepower engine, depending on the version, which gave it a top speed of around 22 miles per hour or 35 kilometers per hour on roads. The suspension consisted of two axles, each of which carried a two-wheeled bogey to which a second set of bogies was connected with a leaf spring. Upward movement on either set of bogies would force the other one down through the spring. This was considered to be a fairly good system and offered better than normal cross-country performance, although it could not compare with the contemporary Christie suspension. The tank was built in two versions. Type A which had two turrets, each mounting a Vickers machine gun, and Type B with a single two-man turret mounting a single machine gun and a short-barreled 47mm OQF three-pounder gun. The Type B proved to be a real innovation. It was found that the two-man turret dramatically increased the rate of fire of either weapon while still allowing both weapons to be fired at the same time. This design, which they referred to as duplex mounting, became common on almost all tank designs after the Mark E. Great Britain decided against adopting the Vickers Mark E, but allowed it for export. The tank was bought by several countries around the world. Greece bought two, Portugal, two, Bolivia, three, Bulgaria, eight, the Soviet Union, 15, plus a production license, Turkey, 16, Nationalist China, 20, Siam, 30, Poland, 32, and a production license, and Finland, 33. However, the most important of these were the production licenses acquired by Poland and the Soviet Union leading to the Polish production of the 7TP in 149 units, and the Soviet Union's producing some 10,300 T26s. All of these vehicles would go on to see action in the Chaco War, franco tai War, Winter War, and World War II. The Finns purchased 26 Mark E Model B tanks in 1938 and seven other modified F models later. They were modified with the Swedish Bofors 37 mm gun, which was far more effective as an anti-tank weapon than the regular short-barreled 47 mm. In 1939, when war broke out with Russia, only 13 were available and only six were able to participate in the Battle of Hong Kaniemi in February 1940. In the Battle of Hong Kaniemi on 26 February 1940, the Finns employed their Vickers tank for the first and only time against Soviet armor during the Winter War. The results were disastrous. Of the 13 available Finnish Vickers six-ton tanks, only six were in fighting condition and able to participate in the first assault on the Soviet lines. To make matters worse, 
one of these six tanks was forced to stop, unable to cross a wide trench. The remaining five continued on a few hundred meters, but ran into dozens of Soviet tanks in the village. The Finnish tanks managed to knock out three Soviet tanks, but were soon overwhelmed and knocked out. In these skirmishes that followed, the Finns lost two more Vickers tanks. In 1941, the Finns rearmed their Vickers six-ton tanks with Soviet high-velocity 45mm guns and redesignated them as T-26Es. These tanks were used by the Finnish Army during the Continuation War. 19 rebuilt Vickers tanks along with 75 T-26s continued in Finnish service after the end of the Second World War. Some of these tanks were kept as training tanks until 1959, when they were finally phased out and replaced by newer British and Soviet tanks. Now in War Thunder Arcade, the Vickers Mark E Type B is located in the Swedish Tech Tree. It is a rank one light tank with a battle rating of 1.0. It has a 176 horsepower engine propelling the 8.6 ton vehicle to a top speed of 24.2 miles per hour. Its main armament is a Bofors 37mm PSVK 36 cannon with a maximum ammo load of 50 rounds. Its secondary armament consists of one coaxial mounted 8mm KSP M36 machine gun. Now I have it assigned to an expert crew with a crew level of 150, which gives me a reload of 3.3 seconds. So what do I think of the Vickers Mark E Type B here in War Thunder Arcade? Well, this is a really good light tank. The Bofors APHE round has good penetration for a low battle rating and inflicts potent post-penetration damage. The cons are uh, it has poor protection and the side armor can be penetrated even by light machine guns. But overall, I find this vehicle much more enjoyable than the Soviet T-26. That being said, why don't we hop into a game and see what I was able to do with the Vickers Mark E Type B. Here we go. All right, we picked up Kuban. I like this map. Oh, we're in the Vickers Mark E Type B. This is actually, I think, a good bit better than the T26, and I'm not, I'm not sure why. Maybe the Bofors has a different muscle velocity than the T26. I'm not sure, but I just feel like I'm able to hit moving targets a little bit easier in this vehicle. Still pretty lightly armored. Anything's going to pin you. But um, the Bofors does have a pretty good penetration and it does do a good bit of post pin damage. So it's good. Come right up here and hide behind this rock. It's one of my favorite spots. This ridge no matter which side you come from. It's got this spot on this side and another spot on the other side. They're both really good. Ooh. Dang it. There we go. I've already got an artillery strike that I can use. Don't really see anything right this minute. There we go.
I'm in this good spot. I'm kind of reluctant to leave it. I'm hoping. Hey, we got an artillery kill. I don't have a shot on that end, too. Panzer IV. Got a hit on him. to hit him. Some green. Dang it, man. He is all over the place. Let's pull forward. We change our angle a little bit. There we go. Good thing this rock is not damaging my gun barrel. Drop some more arty. Take out this air battle. I'm going to try to come over here and bomb the right hand side of this map because I don't have any chance of actually shooting these guys over here. So if I can get kills over here, that's like free free kills. I wouldn't have a woo, three. See, I would not be able to shoot those guys on the other side of the map from this side. So, feeling pretty confident that I can, yes, shoot the guys on this side of the map and that this Bofors will do some good work for me, but to bomb those other dudes. Some already. LVT over here. Pull forward. See if this little angle change helps. I hit that guy. Now it says I shot them guys, but I think the artillery killed them. I think, yeah, I think those were two artillery kills. Those, that LBT died before I actually squeezed the trigger. But regardless, I'll take it. Oh. E70. Nope, he's down behind the hill. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's nice. The T-70s are kind of hard to kill. Those Bofors work really well on that. I tell you, I'm, I'm impressed with this gun. Alright, we've got two cat points. They've got one. Oh, air battle. Here we go. Looks like our friendlies are about to take the ACAP as well. Got an enemy fighter closing in on me. Let's go ahead and get rid of these bombs.
one more. Go for the BT-7. Oh, I missed it. Alright. There's one guy down here. Oh, he just got killed. That was an LVT. Somebody over that way. Oh, out of control. I think we've pretty much got it in hand. They are taking the sea cap back though. Maybe we should head over in that direction. Yeah, at least there's somebody over this way to shoot at. See one guy on the mini map. Hopefully he won't die before I get there. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Get off the hill. Get off the hill. Put the gun down. There we go. Seven. Oh, got him! Woo! Look at there. There's the Panzer three there. Ooh, he took a shot at me. Let's go see if we can return the favor. Oh, gun depression is hard here. It's kind of bad. I hit him. him. Still got one guy over here. Drop some Artie. Maybe I can kill him with that. Drop some Artie over here. Enemy guys. Drop party on that guy. Hands are four. He's dangerous. I don't necessarily want to go face up with him and I'll see if I can get this guy before time runs out. Let's see. Oh, come on. What is he? PT5. Got him! Nice. More arty. Oh, did I get the kill on the Panzer IV? Maybe. All right. Triple strike. Triple strike. Rank does not matter. Multi strike. Avenger. Without a miss. Tank rescuer. Professional. Shadow strike streak. Survivor. Heavy metal hero. And balancer. Player statistics. 16 kills. First place in the team. We'll take that all day long. All right. All righty, we picked up Eastern Europe. I figured something out. I only have one crew selected. I don't have anything in my other two crew slots. Now, if I get killed and leave the game, I don't have crew penalty. I can go right into the next game. But 
if you have your tanks in your other crew slots, if you leave the game early, then those crews receive a penalty, sometimes like five minutes, that they won't be available uh, to play again. So that's to encourage you to finish playing the game in the other two crews, which I do a lot of times, unless I'm really crunched for time. I'll just play the other two vehicles, but, and especially if I'm working on um, spading those vehicles out. But, you know, I'm revisiting, not revisiting, I'm looking at this low tier vehicle for the first. Yes! You mate. Okay, yeah. Um, somebody else to shoot at? There's a T26. Booyah! It's like a sh turkey shoot. Sorry. Concentrating. Got him. Oh, I missed that T26. And again. Got his transmission. There we go. Alright. So, yeah. Since this is a newer low tier vehicle that I'm visiting, all my other low tier vehicles are already spaded. So, I don't need to play them. So I just didn't even select them. So when I get killed in this, I can just hop out and go right into a, another game and not suffer any crew penalties. I'm trying to get these guys close to this B cap, give my team a chance to capture it. Maybe try this T28. Can't get the nose down. Ugh. Okay. I got two. Three targets destroyed. T26. Got him. I thought I had missed him. BT5. Got him. The nature boy. Y'all probably don't know who the nature boy is. It's Ric Flair. It's a wrestler from oh, bombs, bombs, bombs. Yep, yep. That would have surely taken me out. That was a good bomb placement. Yeah, I don't know why I'm talking about the Nature Boy Ric Flair. But, I'll take this bombing run out. He's a wrestler from when I was a child. When wrestling was first starting to get big. And he used to go, woo! Like that. Anyway. Here we go. Lots of targets to choose from. I'm gonna try to go for maybe these AA guns because they are lightly armored. There's another one right there. Lightly armored and if they're not paying attention, they're easy to kill. And an enemy tank destroyer over here on the line between F and G. Looks like it is an M8. Hmm. 
I hit it. Got him. Got him. I was just switching rounds too. gonna go back to the spot but we our team has advanced so far ahead that I think I need to move my supporting fire up a little bit or I won't have anything to shoot at Drop some party. I want to be careful not to silhouette myself too much up here on this hill. It makes you an easy target. Oh, he got killed by a bomb. Him. I go kaboom. That's what he does. All right, there's an M13. I need to be careful of those guys. Drop Artie right there on the edge. Hit him. Got his gunner. Let's get this guy. Got him. Move. Got this guy. Oh. Dang it. Missed him. Oh, he stopped. All right. That was a bad choice. M13. I hit him, but I didn't kill him. All right. Let's see what we did. Woo! Yes. Love to see them line up like that. Okay. First strike, ground force rescuer, triple strike, shadow strike streak, multi strike, ground multi strike, without a miss, teamwork, avenger, tank rescuer, professional, multi strike, final blow, mission maker, survivor, and heavy metal hero. All right, 18 kills. And my results. Yes. Okay, well, those were some decent matches. I kind of feel bad. I am a level 100 player and I'm down here at battle rating 1.0. But I'm down here to review a vehicle and show you the potential for this vehicle. So... I'm not staying down here just to beat up on uh, low tier players. But I do have to say that the skill level of the players down here has increased dramatically from when I was a low tier player down here. Um, yeah, but still makes me feel... I don't think all these players down here are low tier. But, but it does make me feel a little bit bad, so... I'm going to bump it up a couple of tiers for my next video. But back to the uh, Vickers Mark E. Yeah, the Bofors is really good. The tank is somewhat weak armor. 
It's a little faster, a little more maneuverable than the T26. It's a really good low tier tank. And if you haven't tried it, you should give it a try. You might can get results like these. Now, if you've liked this video, like it. If you didn't, don't subscribe if you would. But as always, thanks to my financial supporters. I hope you see your name in the credits. And thanks for watching. Nerd out.